today we are we are here with uh, none other than Tansri. Yeah. Uh, of course, uh, sorry. Why am I so nervous today? Can I say Musa Hassan? Uh, I didn't do anything illegal uh, earlier. Uh, you know, but it feels this, like it, right? This, this, when you're with the, one of the eminent uh, law enforcement gentlemen. He's an ex police officer. You know, yeah. <laughs> um, you know it, it's just. Uh, it, Reminds me of my childhood days. <laughs> right. um, it's in the subconscious mind. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but um, we're, we're here today to, to discuss changing the, the business dynamic around physical security. Uh, and we've also, we're also joined by Bruce Hope. Good morning. Uh, and uh, I will I'll ask him to introduce himself shortly. And, and Iqbal, Muhammad Iqbal Ali. Um, uh, and today we're discussing what is going on with physical security and, and, and what what needs to change and, and, and with that country we, we, yeah, we, we'd like to hear your your in a sense opening remarks as it were uh, in terms of what's going on in Malaysia in yeah. terms of physical security and and what is the future uh, okay. of physical security in, in Malaysia and how do we see how do you see that changing as, okay. as, as, a, as a former uh, I'm safe uh, former uh, in, enforcement officer Good morning, gentlemen, uh, and uh, and also our audience. Uh, first of all, physical security is, of course, that's the uh, uh, what you say, the uh, normal uh, security that normally people does. Uh, in fact, uh, you use a lot of manpower for physical physical security, where we need to train people because uh, it's important because. Uh, as for the police, you, they want them to be uh, very, to, to be visible. Uh, visibility seems to protect people from crimes yes. and all that, and to deter criminals to commit mm -hmm. crime. Mm -hmm. But of course, uh, at present, with the advent of uh, technology, mm -hmm. I think we should uh, be uh, uh, using technology too, okay. in order to uh, enhance uh, the physical security. You can okay. have uh, physical security, not only manpower, but you have to have uh, uh, the, the, the strong doors, for example, mm -hmm. to, to, to ensure that your house is safe. Okay. Yeah. People feel that they are sometimes staying in the prison because it's being locked. You live in a, in a locked uh, area. Mm -hmm. So I think uh, with the advent of technology, we can enhance that. Uh, people want to be free, but sometimes uh, you want people to do business with you. You want people to come to your place, mm -hmm. but then due to this physical security, uh, yes. people are being checked and all that. Yes. So because of that, I think we should uh, uh, we should uh, uh, get these new uh, types of uh, technology where we allow people to have access, but of mm -hmm. course they can be raised and can be checked. You know? Yes, yes. So I think in the future, uh, physical uh, physical security is still is still being needed. Okay. But of course, we have to uh, uh, do it together with the technology that we have. Okay. Okay. And and how do you see where we are now in Malaysia compared <laughs> to other countries around the region, or, or or is there a global best practice, or or do we need a Malaysia solution for Malaysia. What, what's, your, what's your opinion there? Uh, my opinion is that uh, at, at present, we, we, we see that we are more concentrated on manpower. 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 So yeah. literally guards at the <laughs> literally door. Literally guards at the door and all yeah. that. And of course, uh, with manpower, you really have to train them. Okay. They have to have the skills and knowledge in order to do this good. Mm -hmm. It's no point just having people wearing that uniform Mm -hmm. But they don't know what to do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you see? <laughs> so you need to have a good training for them. Mm -hmm. So uh, to enhance further. But of course, uh, if you uh, have technology together with them, mm -hmm. then you have to increase their knowledge on how to use such technology to assist okay. them in their work. Okay. Got it. Got it. Uh, so that is very important. So if I can break this into two halves, because yeah. uh, it's, it's good also we can get Bruce into the conversation right. and, and Iqbal as well. If we, if we look at Part of that solution is half of it is technology, technology. half of it is training. Training. So if I can go to Bruce, uh, who I know is also the, the technology advisor to Swiss right. as well, if I, if I yes. remember correctly. You've remembered correctly, okay. yes. 
<laughs> so yes, uh, hi, I'm Bruce here. I'm the technology advisor to the uh, Swiss Salangal Walaya Industrial Security Society. That's a bit of a mouthful. That's why we call it Swiss. Uh, Tansri is the chairman. And I say I'm the uh, technology advisor. Uh, it came as a little bit of a surprise to me, uh, but I've actually uh, spent a long time doing technology over the last sort of 30 years and how I actually got into the technology aspect uh, was for the security was we, we've been developing um, biometric attendance solutions and we had uh, one of our clients said, hey, can you actually do something around guards? Can you actually get them for their guard patrol? Uh, because there have been the wand systems, there have been the... the key systems and so we developed based on a terminal a uh, portable thumbprint reader basically and that was a very simple thing but we found even with a very simple thing that actually it took a lot of training just to get people to use this very simple thing so if we go further if we develop further uh, if we go down the world of having sensors for everything motion sensors infrared sensors heat sensors temperature sensors, whatever, around security, uh, and we're looking at using technology to enhance guarding and maybe reduce the manpower requirement, There's, that can't be done overnight. It has to take some time. You have to plan all of that part correctly. There will be in many different solutions, and it depends on what you're trying to guard as to what is the right type of technology to use. Uh, if you're thinking about because there is a lot of talk about smart cities and maybe an, another future edition of, of um, MGBF specials will talk mm -hmm. about smart cities and also the security aspects to that. How do you build a multi, sorry, how do you guard a multi-billion dollar physical asset? And then you zoom right back into where I live is a small housing area where the, the fairly usual thing that's common in Malaysia, not enough people paying because it's a voluntary thing so not enough people paying for security so how do you maximize the technology to deliver um, the security needs part of what swiss is also trying to advocate is outcome-based uh, security i sort of liken the current um, security we have as the body shop solution no offense to the body shop wonderful people but uh, body shop where you just say okay i need more guards but actually do you really need more guards what are you actually trying to do what do you tr what are your outcomes so for a very expensive building you're trying to make sure the building is secure for housing areas number one priority in my view are the people living there so how do you make sure that there are no intrusions no bad things happening to the residents then obviously property is another thing and where can technology take us to that what can be put in place that is cost effective uh, that will allow people to feel protected yeah. because you have to feel protected if you don't feel protected then you're going to say i still want to guard mm -hmm. so that's where the technology aspects and we can explore that a little bit more thanks bruce before i, I, I switch to well, i'm going to come back to time three yeah. really quickly bruce mentioned of course he's talking about the technology but this feeling you know, it's kind of this emotional security. How important is that emotional element? And you, of course, dealt with, with yeah. many security situations throughout your career. How important is it that that emotion for, for keeping the public safe? Yeah. Uh, in Malaysia, for example, the public always thinks that it's only the police uh, responsibility uh -huh. to take care of security. Uh, but of course, uh, in Malaysia, we also have uh, private securities companies mm -hmm. where they provide services of securities. Okay. So uh, in order to have the public to feel safe and comfortable, mm -hmm. I think they should uh, work together with the police. Okay. Because they are the eyes and ears of the police, you know. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> so I've been uh, always uh, telling them that you have to work together with us. Okay. Uh, so that is what uh, is very important. But however, we feel that uh, the uh, security service, private security service in Malaysia, mm -hmm. there is actually no proper, uh, there is no, uh, no proper uh, incentive okay. for the guards. 
Okay. Because the the employers they they only want to make, to make money out of it. Okay. So it's a business. <laughs> it's a business. Yeah. yeah. But the guards are not being trained and all that. Mm -hmm. You know. So we have to ensure that the guard is being trained. Yes. And they know what actually to do. See, and mm -hmm. how to uh, work close closely with the police. Okay. Uh, that is very important. That can only be if, if that happens, then uh, the public will be much more feel, felt. See that, that security you know, level. Security yeah. level is high. Okay, because uh, I mean, for me, I, I I see a lot of physical yeah. security, and yeah. and it, it it does. I always ask the question, you know, what happens if something goes wrong? Yeah, you know, and you and you see there, there's a a, a a massive presence. But my next question, and we're going to shift over to Iqbal. If I may add, yeah, sure, Tansu, go ahead. Uh, I think we should also create a, uh, a career development for them. Okay. Not only for the security, for the security guards. Okay. Okay. <laughs> you know, that's yeah. very important because yeah. they feel that they are being paid very lowly, mm -hmm. and they've got no opportunity to to rise up. So that's why sometimes they, they only uh, uh, be for, for temporary to be a security guard. Yeah. Later on, they leave the job. Okay. So we don't. So that there's to no happen. future. No future for them. Yeah. yeah. No, I, I still remember the joke. Uh, you know, on the security guards' resume. Uh, which is oh, I wake up at any uh, any given sound, right. you know. <laughs> so it's a very difficult uh, future. But Iqbal, uh, taking what Tansri has said, and then when we look at this this two parts of the problem, is is yes, we've got the technology. The moment you start implementing technology, you need better training. But even without implementing new technology, are there training solutions that we can come to? Of course, um, just before I answer that question, I, I can relate what Tansri is saying and what Bruce just said that, um, you know, I, I live in Shah Alam, said to be a resort lifestyle neighborhood. But uh, the developers, I must say, was a bit errant, you know, and uh, they've not been responsible. But the beautiful part about the neighborhood is that they decided, and, and there were a lot of break ins. When I was first moved in, within a month or two, there were five break ins, and all these with parang and everything. Eh? Um, so, so the neighborhood, the great thing about them is that they said, okay, let's get our, our act together, you know, and they got the jagas to come in, okay, and they doubled up and all that. So I agree with Tansri that, that you know, um, the key point is that they need to be visible, but technology will definitely help because along the way, we started working on technology with cameras and sensors and, you know, all those things. And Alhamdulillah, um, there have not been a single break-in since, you know. So things mm -hmm. actually work out. Now, coming back to that, I mean, about training, um, yes, I agree that, you know, these uh, guards do wear their, their uniform, you know. Uh, some, of course, uh, known here is that um, the the ne Nepalese guards are much better trained. Um, well, I, I don't know where is the magic, <laughs> where is the formula. Yeah. You know, is it the in the DNA? Level, <laughs> is it in the level, DNA or uh, is it real high class uh, classroom training? You know, or is it that they have been, they have served the army back home? I'm not sure, but mm. but surely training is key because everything begins with attitude. You know, so if they f if they feel that there is uh, some kind of an ownership, you you said it right about incentives, you know, but some people will have that sense of belonging, that ownership, that buy-in for the company, maybe with incentives, maybe career development, maybe, you know, so this can be handled in classroom trainings and, and of course, on-site training, that's for sure. Tansri, we, we talk about, uh, a lot of people talk about the problem with fresh graduates. You know, and, and, and for me, I'm, I kind of get excited when I hear this problem for fresh graduates. If there is a nice career path, if, you know, if they, if they see, look, there's technology involved, there's training involved, there's, there's a, you're, you're just not a, a you know, this, I think there's even a movie done about it in America, like mall cop, you, you know, you're just, but if, if, if that is put in place, is this an area that fresh graduates can now look at because they might be able to develop a career. Of course, 
course, if uh, you have the proper training and all that, the mm -hmm. can be developed. I think this will encourage them mm -hmm. to, to be with the security industry and all that. Mm -hmm. But, uh, of course, uh, I'm trying my best now to uh, discuss with certain universities okay. to develop uh, certain programs, training programs, mm -hmm. uh, professional training programs okay. for security officers and all that. All so right. if uh, it's it's all right, then I think quite a number of people will, will join it. Okay. But of course, at the moment in Malaysia, we have lots of foreigners who, yeah. Are, yeah. who are security guards. Yes, yes. Not only Nepalis. The government okay. allows Nepalis, but you have Bangladeshis, you have Indonesians as yeah. security guards. Whatever you can get, right, I sometimes. Think that is wrong. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> all right. <laughs> I still okay. have to really okay. streamline. Okay. I really uh, want only local people to do okay. security okay uh, why is that country what's what's the okay number what's one, the thinking behind number that? one is the loyalty to the to the government to the, to the country itself to the country yeah, yeah <laughs> that's that number helps one. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah number two uh, we can save so that our economy it does not flow out of okay. this country because if you have foreigners the money will flow out because they have to send back the money back to the country and all that. Yeah, yeah exactly so this is what yeah. we should do okay <laughs> So if fresh graduates wake up and realize that there's an opportunity, we develop an industry. Uh, is this something that Swiss is looking to do in, in Selangor, Malaya? This is what we're trying to do. <laughs> okay, good. If not, we've got some problems. At Swiss uh, because now. we don't want only uh, to concentrate on the employers. Employers, okay. they just want to make money and all that. But of course, mm -hmm. we have to concentrate on the employees, yes. their welfare and all that, so that yes, they'll yes. be interested. To yeah. become security officers. Okay, <laughs> excellent, excellent. Now, Bruce, you you've you've lived in 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 many different countries. You've travelled around the world. You you you've seen different environments and different realities. How how does Malaysia, or maybe you know, even we don't look at all of Malaysia. How does KL shift from this uh, approach to massive use of, of human labour? Uh, to technology, is it a is it a policy change? Is it a is it the employers waking up to it, or is it a a, a, a total solution? Where are we? How do we get there? Okay, that's a fairly broad question. Yeah. Uh, my opinion is that there will actually have to be a number of different things happening together. Yes, there will need to be a technology. Sorry, a um, maybe some policy changes. Um, I suspect that there needs to be a looking at from a, um, a government perspective of where is this focus for uh, TVET? Where is the focus okay. for the education realm? How are we going to encourage Malaysians to say, hey, security is an industry in which I can work? Uh, if you're going to be uh, basically a guard on duty, Maybe that's not for everybody, right? Yeah. But there still needs to be that type. I'm still not quite sure why we want to depend, like uh, Tansri says, on uh, foreigners for guarding our assets. And the number one asset are our own people. But let's give that to somebody else. And frequently, they don't even speak the same language. It doesn't matter which language you use. I've tried English. I've tried my very bad Bahasa. I've tried it's Chinese. It's not that bad. They, yeah. <laughs> they don't understand. They, they, yeah. they just so... You say, okay, whatever. So you wonder, again, with your question before yeah. about the um, what happens if there is an emergency. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. I do recall when my house was burgled. I'm sorry, just diverting, but I do recall yeah. when my house was burgled, the um, night watchmen were very happy watching the police cars drive past, come to my house, do their stuff and leave. They didn't even move from their guard post. You went... Hmm, maybe there should be a little bit more interest in the work that we're doing. Yeah. So coming back to policy changes, yes, there needs to be an encouragement of um, around the security industry that, yes, there are different roles that could be played. A security analyst is maybe somebody who's looking at um, the, the threats that are being shown up by... Uh, the cameras by the motion sensor whatever so that's a security analyst mm. there'll be the management around that so you can be a manager in the industry uh making sure that the security uh is actually happens mm. there'll be something around the insurance industry and maybe iqbal can comment on that a bit later where hey 
should you actually have lower premiums yeah. if you've actually got even better uh, security? But how do you even measure that your security is good? Yeah, exactly. How do you? Is there any form of standardisation around that so you can so you can actually go to a building and say, okay, we assess that your security risk is X, so therefore your premiums should be lower. You should be rewarded for that. Mm. Uh, at the moment, I don't think you are. There's no way to measure as far yeah. as I can tell. Uh, the framework that Swiss is putting in for the or are proposing for. Uh, industry industrial training mm -hmm. there is a framework for from guards all the way up to the top so that mm -hmm. everybody's actually understanding that so that to me is where malaysia needs to head towards mm -hmm. uh, to evolve the whole thing because as you have more and more people in the smaller and smaller area then the security risks and threats will increase it just that's just natural you have more people together, yeah. the threats will increase. So you have okay. to have proper strategies in place to deal with that. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Bruce. We've got a few questions uh, coming through. Uh, and of course, uh, by all means, everyone, uh, you know, uh, while we have Tansri, Bruce and Iqbal here, be, be ask as many questions as you can. Uh, and I'm sure we're more than happy to get through them as much as possible. Uh, one question is around design. Uh, and, and designing security. I think that, I think, uh, I can't remember who I saw it there. And the other one is um, uh, the, the question around, I know a lot of questions coming, they all went down. Um, keep it coming though. Um, uh, questions around design, questions around uh, insurance, uh, and, and questions around, uh, again, uh, fresh graduates. Now, when I think of some amazing stories, uh, I think of um, Sochi Olympics. Yeah. Okay, the Sochi Olympics was a massive story around how they were securing the Olympics. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, right. the, the threats in Russia right. are right. completely different than right. here, but the reality was this was a key component of the narrative that Russia said, look, you can host this uh, massive event here because we're getting the security right. right. Do people realize that security is part of your business narrative? Yeah, of course, I think now people do realize that mm -hmm. security is part of the business right. Because, it, because I feel that every business, when you want to, 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 to invest in this country, yes, number one, yeah. you have to know that they've got security, uh, security, uh, there's no security problems there. Yes, yes. <laughs> you're physically safe. Physically safe and yeah. the economy is good, you know, mm -hmm. then people will come in. Yes. Uh, similarly, if you want to, uh, hold any events, mm -hmm. international events. They, they, they will normally number one is to check on the security, whether mm -hmm. when people is going there, they, they'll be safe or not. Yes. I, I once had an experience when I was uh, the IGP, where China wants to hold the Olympics in China. Okay. So I was uh, asked to go to China, mm -hmm. invited to China, uh -huh. to give, uh, 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 to set up a security uh, for the, uh, blueprint okay. for them. So we okay. work together with other... Okay. <laughs> Was that your experience from the Commonwealth Games, if I remember? It's Olympics. Yeah, okay. Okay. <laughs> Olympics. okay. In China, yeah. In China, okay. Uh, so we have to present on how to uh, ensure that the, the, the stadium is safe, mm -hmm. how does the people to go in. So, so uh -huh. my team and I has uh -huh. to do deliver, a, this. deliver this. Yeah. Okay. Nice. Oh, I didn't know. <laughs> no, it, because actually... The amazing thing about sporting events is yeah. they're high profile. They're high profile. Yeah. You get it wrong, it's literally live. Very true. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so that's good. Iqbal, you're also uh, quite a, a decent sportsman. Yeah. Actually, uh, Tan Sri. Iqbal, uh, former national captain of the national cricket team. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so he knows a little bit about sports uh, and he's also doing uh, quite a bit. Uh, but Iqbal, before we get to your sports well, and your. I was looking at you. Before we get to your sports, um, Bruce, and you, you're also a key player in, in, in the uh, insurance industry here yeah. in Malaysia. Has the insurance industry caught up with the changes in technology? And are they ready for what Bruce is saying? Reducing uh, premiums if you start to get your, your thing? Or, or, have it, or have companies not even woken up to the fact that get your security equation right and then you can get your... Yeah. A, a reduction here. What, where is that going in insurance? Um, you know, I mean, just looking at the whole, the bigger picture, 
I, I'm not too sure if the companies actually realize that um, by them sprucing up their security uh, features, it actually has an impact on their bottom line. Because um, we're, we're talking about big premiums here. I mean, we're talking about big setup, therefore big premiums. And, uh, and, and most insurance companies, when they see that the boxes are ticked as far as security features, and, then there will always be a reduced premium rates. And that would save under expenses and therefore it impacts your savings of the company. You know, um, so, uh, so maybe security companies should also do that bit of presentation, trying to create the awareness for the, the head honchos of big, big companies that what I'm doing is saving money for you. You know, because mm -hmm. if you get that right, then you will have reduced premiums and it will impact because you like it or not, you need to put in the security features. Yeah. It's just that whether you're doing it correctly or is it just namesake, you say you have all this or do you actually have real good technology in place and the guards are really, really well trained. So, you know, when all these boxes are ticked, chances are things are, I mean, insurance companies are always um, at par with what's happening, you know, because it's business for them. Yeah, you know, there's some you very smart people, <laughs> you know, crunching those the numbers. Less educated you are, the more premiums you pay. You yeah. will ask demand from you. So, 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 so they know, they know. As Bruce said it just now quietly, <laughs> mm -hmm. as you're paying more premiums, we can afford uh, a more knowledgeable and more trained, um, yeah. what do you call that, risk, risk yeah. managers, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. And the risk managers will always find ways to see where we can tap more premiums, you know, right. that kind of stuff. But if your boxes are ticked, then quite likely you're on safe grounds. Okay. Nice. Now, we, we take this building, for example. Uh, by the way, thank you to Le Meridian uh, for for hosting us today and having a, having a, actually it's a wonderful spot for coffee, wonderful spot for uh, lunch later. Times we, uh, uh, we will, usually we have lunch on the table, but it's a bit early. Um, but uh, but um, one of the things that I like about Le Meridian uh, here in KL uh, is the the level of security that you have to go through to get it's here. It's quite high. It's quite high and. And you mentioned it earlier about foreign investors and foreign nice. visitors. They feel safe. True. It's annoying. Yeah, yeah. But it's uh, it's actually at the end of the day, I I, I feel safer. Yeah. But now we see with I mean we have become more technology technologically advanced because of COVID nineteen. Right. We're scanning everything every day. Can we use COVID nineteen as kind of a catalyst to improve business physical security and? Someone has asked, what is the future of physical security? How, how do you see that playing out in, in, in the next few months and years? Okay. Well, with the pandemic, I think uh, it will be uh, later on that this country will also ensure that uh, the technology can be used okay. in order to uh, enhance security. For example, when you want to enter that building, you have to... The Sujatra, no? Yeah, yeah. The temperature check. Yeah, I did it. Of course, good. of yeah. course. Yeah. This recognition. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. 10,000 bucks. <laughs> it's very important, you know? <laughs> yeah. So we know who is coming in and coming out. Yes. So I think there's a great feature for that. Okay. Uh -huh. Because, uh, uh, in fact, uh, I am very fond of this uh, uh, innovation of technology. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes it is a data that can be used for evidence in court later on. Oh, yes. So it's very, it very important for us. It will yes, assist yes. the police in everything. We didn't think of that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Uh, so we should encourage that. Okay. So individuals can also say, look, I've scanned. I've got the you evidence. Know? It's in the phone. Right. Yeah. True. Yeah. So, true. so, so you, all the application here. Yeah. yeah. So you can't be fined 10,000 because I've, I've got the proof. Yeah. Okay, nice. No, and this is one of the things that I, I, I see because of the pandemic, we become more acceptable to use this because True. otherwise there was no reason, like if people ask me right. to scan yeah. coming into a building before, I would look at them like, you know, something yeah, yeah. something wrong with you, you know, <laughs> I, I'm not buying anything, why do I need to scan? So so when when we see that, and we, Iqbal mentioned, you know, we've got some big assets and I, by, by and large, if you look at the, the, the biggest investments into Malaysia, it's in the Klang Valley. Right. You, you know, we've got all these high-tech companies, high-tech um, 
assets here. Uh, uh, there's a few, a few, um, a few questions around um, uh, cybersecurity as well. <laughs> One of the things that I always think about is what happens when the cybersecurity assets are not physically protected. Oh, oh yeah, this this is this is very sad here. Yeah. yeah, they have to be protected. In mm -hmm. fact. Uh, when you use cyber security, there's a lot of threats. People can hack into your system and all uh -huh. that. So I think recently there's a case where immigration, they hack, they hack the system and they, they yeah. issue forge, forge passes, you know. Okay. <laughs> so then yeah. it's bad for security. Yeah, very, very bad. <laughs> yeah. and so we have to encourage uh, yeah. that uh, to ensure that the system is safe. Okay. Uh -huh. so, okay. Bruce, what have, what have you seen as, as changing during COVID-19? Well, I think the fairly obvious here one is everybody, well, not everybody, but many, many more people using their handphones and scanning the QR codes. So that's one of the other one major things. And the other one is people working from home. So basically, yes, that is actually possible. Uh, those two major things are actually, they will change the way security is delivered. One is you may not necessarily need to have everybody in an office. So that means your security requirements for your office reduces. But it also means, well, hey, my, my actual uh, employees are at home. So is there actually a, a employer uh, responsibility to somehow help with that security provision? And it may come down to the cyber security side as opposed to uh, physical security. Uh, with everybody using their handphone and scanning all the time, that means there is more acceptance now that, hey, I can do things. I can actually scan in. With that, that means you can actually start putting apps on the phones related to security. Mm -hmm. So you can actually, then there's a number of apps now already happening, uh, for example, around housing areas. You use uh, an app for pre-registering visitors to actually when I've arrived for getting in. Uh, I believe there are actually a, a couple of condos, country where in fact security provided, there are no guards at all. Sure. They're actually, it's all online effectively. Uh, that's obviously a very um, sort of high security type of condo, but they are already available here in Malaysia. So that type of living is already here. So with more and more of this app, COVID-19 is actually, so it's prompting people to have different ways of thinking how to actually um, uh, use the tools that are at our disposal, the easy, convenient tools to actually do more. Uh, from my own experience, my own uh, IT company, we went from terminal base, we developed the app-based solution because people are now used to it. Mm -hmm. uh, so so that's definitely COVID uh, prompted that type of shift of okay. uh, thinking. So it's it's starting, it's not, not the end, mm -hmm. um, but it's allowed people to say, hey, we can do more. Okay, now we're getting a lot of uh, uh, questions coming in and <clears throat> I think someone actually asked you to go uh, turn to and give a talk at some of the insurance uh, oh, companies. Yeah. Uh, so I think you, and I think uh, a few people are asking how to become members of Swiss as well. Okay. Um, so I'll, I'll uh, I think uh, Bruce, if 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 we, I think we'll be able to put the link right. Oh yes, uh, we can do that. Sir. Yeah, yeah. Yes. We'll, we'll definitely put the link yes. down in, in, in below how to become a member uh, of of in Swiss website. Yes, we'll, we'll provide the details we'll provide later. Yes, yeah, exactly, which is which is good. Yeah. Um, and uh, we'll, with that, I think a couple other questions here. Another one, again, is this information question. My Sajatra app, touch and go wallet, e-wallet, and information, bank information. Right. Has there been, in your opinion, an increase in, in, in these kind of attacks? Uh, and, and why do you think that is? I mean, it's not really a physical security question, but... I'm sure you get asked this yeah. uh, as, a, as the former IGP. With that, I think you have to be careful because there are a lot of scams. You know, because there are, uh, for example, Maybank, there are certain uh, certain uh, uh, websites. Okay. They, they, they uh, produce this website as if it's from the bank. Okay. <laughs> you know? So you have to be careful. You don't uh -huh. always give your password to anyone. Okay. <laughs> That's very important. So it, like so mirrors you, in front. Yeah, yeah, you have to be careful on that. Yeah. And of course, uh, as I've said earlier, the police have to really inform the public okay. about the scams and all that, so the public is mm -hmm. aware. 
okay. so that they, they won't become victims of it. Okay. Uh, that's very important. <laughs> All right. So it, it's it's not necessarily using the technology, it's just it's the scams scam behind it. Behind, yeah. okay. Scams behind it. Yeah. Okay. Scams behind it. Okay. Okay. Nice. And. Uh, sorry, is it, is it problems? There's so many questions. Uh, thank you guys for all the questions, and by, by all means, keep them coming. Um, when we when we go back to uh, foreign investors, when yeah. we go back to protecting physical assets, how now uh, in, in, is is it important for someone like Swiss uh, as the organization, um, as a, as a reputable organization? Now, I, I'm a if, say I'm a foreign investor. I come into right. Malaysia. I I need to know the security reality right. here in Malaysia. Now, it could be a, the headquarters is in Germany or in Brussels or, or, or wherever, Australia or Japan. Um, how important is that third-party verification? Because in, in over, you know, from an overseas well, perspective, I've, I've got an idea of security. Yeah. Now, when I come here, uh, you know, it, of course, MITRE and everyone is talking about how lovely it is, and it is lovely. Yeah. Uh, by all means, come and invest. Um, and and uh, start start with MIDA. But the reality is, very quickly, the head of security in H HQ is going to say, okay, what's protecting us? Yeah. And how does Swiss kind of fill that gap between between what's going on internationally and, 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 and what's going on in Malaysia? And, and is there a way that you can communicate? Okay. Swiss is only... A just re just be formed yeah but, but mm -hmm. our future development is that we are going to uh, open up okay number one is to to educate the public okay regarding security because All sometimes right. the public themselves are not aware of it mm -hmm. okay? and then of course if at the later stage or in the future that we could also provide uh, information okay for investors to come in Okay. Uh, that we have to work together with the ministries. <laughs> okay, good, 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 yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. so that they can allow us uh -huh. to give us uh, the feedback of uh, in this, uh, of the security in this country. Okay. Uh -huh. So okay. I think that will be in the future. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So at Re the moment we are trying to gather all our partners. Okay. So that our stakeholders, so that we can uh, actually educate the public about okay. security. Yeah. Nice, nice, nice. We've got another another question coming in. Um, again, it's coming back to the, the, the youngsters and the fresh graduates. Um, what advice would you give to someone who is, is about to either graduate or, or, or perhaps go into university? What? Because you would think, okay, I'm going to study psychology, I'm going to study this. Yeah. Should they go into criminology or sh what, what, what should you study if you're going into, into the security well, industry? What did. In the What's your industry, you have to study about behavior. Behavior. Okay. Behavior. <laughs> uh, yeah. I'm behaving myself. People's country. behavior. <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. Uh, behavioral studies, how they call it. Well, I don't know what, 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 what they call it. Yeah. You know? uh -huh. So then, yeah, uh, on psychology too. Okay. You did, because sometimes you, you meet with people. Mm -hmm. Then you have to know how to handle them. Yes. That's very important. Yes. Yeah? Even criminals, you have to handle them properly. Yes, definitely. <laughs> right. And then, of course, I think criminology will mm -hmm. help if you know a bit about criminology. Okay. Yeah, because, uh, of course, as, as a security officer, you are trying to detect mm -hmm. crime. Yes. So with that, you can really analyze mm -hmm. uh, the behavior of people and all that. Yes. Uh, so that are all the important subjects that you should know, okay. apart from the uh, uh, skills and knowledge about security itself. Okay. Okay. Iqbal, you've done a lot of training in Malaysia. How how ready are the youngsters in terms of getting industry ready in, in this field? And what, what advice would you give them? Thank you, Noah, by the way. I'll let him think about the question while I thank you uh, for this interesting question. Because we, we do get a lot of youngsters uh, yeah. watching our show. Right. And it's, it's something that I think from a business perspective, business is changing, industry is changing, and, and the people who go into the industry need to know what's the future well um, because I belong to the the, the Otai <laughs> slightly generation. older generation <laughs> for those who don't speak uh, Malaysian so uh, you know um, um, this, you know that the, the, the undergraduates that come in today they have a different way of seeing things yeah you know mm -hmm. um, 
and they're all about being quick you know so so you can't have lectures that are longer than 45 minutes i thought you were going to say 45 seconds yeah <laughs> i was going to say that but i didn't want to like really put okay. them down you know and you know within the first 10 15 minutes their mind is everywhere yeah. you know and uh, and and their handphones are out their ipads are out their laptops are out and and as a moderator or a trainer or a coach god knows what's <laughs> what they're looking at you know yeah. so they I, I guess it's all about the dna now okay this is one quick information so they are very sharp very analytical they are spot on in most of the things. What they generally like, the way I see things, is what they've learned and what they put yeah. out there. You know, that is that gap where, where uh, some parts of the training program that uh, we conduct is to become a theorist and now a practitioner. You know, mm. It doesn't matter which field, but that's where the gap is. So hence the reason why I mentioned to Tansi earlier on, yes, you must have the classroom training, but you definitely need the on-site training. The practical. So, yeah, the practical, practical training. training you know, otherwise mm. there's a major gap and they will sound so good, so sharp in class. When they, you put them out on the field, they're like, Different. wow, <laughs> what am I supposed yeah. to do? Because they're very sharp. Yeah. You know, yeah. they're much sharper than my time, I would say. <laughs> you know, but is it, but is the it right because questions. they're expecting instant results? Yes, of course. Whereas work is not actually necessarily instant results. <laughs> correct, <laughs> correct. You know, so so this is the part where, where where employers need to be a bit more creative in how you you pace them and get them to see the immediate future mm -hmm. rather than ten years True. down the road. What this is what you're going to be. I want to know ten months from now what yeah. <laughs> what I am going to get. I agree with what you must say. Practical mm -hmm. training is important. Yeah, yeah. Because mm -hmm. the field training has to be really mm -hmm. uh, taught to them. Because okay. uh, learning from classrooms and uh, practically is a two different thing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. In terms of the Malaysian police force, uh, although you, you, you don't uh, necessarily speak for them now, but yeah. how much of it is field training and how much... Because uh, okay. yeah. when I was in service before, I and enhance more on training. Okay. I focus more on training. Okay. Because uh, even as a CPO, when I was in Johor, I mm -hmm. conduct my own training for my officers. Okay. Nice. Nice. Petrols, petrol cars, you know, how uh -huh. you stop cars and all that. Then mm -hmm. how do you defend yourself? Okay. They should know all these things. Yeah. Actual policy. The actual policy. That's very yeah. important. How yes. you stop a person, how you arrest a person. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want to know. The law is different. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but the yeah. way you do it. Yeah. It? Exactly. Uh, that's very important. So that's why before uh, have, uh, I have uh, asked for the government to have every state to have a police training center. Okay. So that the uh, officers can be trained. Okay. And uh, during my time, those officers who are on retirement point or have retired, I put them on contract. Okay, good. To good. train good. others, you know. Okay. <laughs> Keep that institutional Keep that institution learning. Learning, yeah. Learning, learning is... is, is for life, you know. Yeah. yeah. Yes. <laughs> Learning is for life until you're dead. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Nice, nice. Yeah. No, I really appreciate um, that perspective because I think this is where the youngsters don't realize. They think, oh, I've got my degree. Yeah. I'm ready. I'm, I, I, I can conquer the world. But I think this is something. But Bruce, as as um, as we start to wrap up this session, um, what what are your takeaways and what do you see as the changing dynamic uh, as as we say uh, as our theme is the changing business dynamic of physical security what what can we look forward to in the future uh, well i think the whole thing the whole ethos uh, that uh, swiss is also promoting as an industry security industry has to change as a whole so it's not only the um, provider mindset but also the buyer mindset so everybody actually has to be looking at how do we adopt technology? How do we reduce our dependence on foreigners to provide our security? How do we actually have something that is suitable for Malaysians by Malaysia? And how do we best use technology to achieve that? Uh, and that's what we're looking forward to over the next few years of actually making that happen. Okay. Iqbal, also in, 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 as, as we close off, um, what do you see one from the training perspective, two of course from the, the 
the insurance component, and what's the convergence that you're you're going to see? Um, I mean, unfortunately, you know, I'm coming from the training training angle. Okay, go, you know? go 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 training there. <laughs> yeah. To me, it's just a mindset. Okay? okay, it's just a mindset. I mean, you got to understand the bigger picture. I mean, in short, I just want to say this. I had a very exp uh, interesting experience with one person. And um, and um, the total reliance was about having gut dogs and stuff like that. Okay? And uh, this is, I mean, Bruce would love to hear this. Uh, there was an incident where the gate was open and the dogs came out and went for the nearest nine-year-old child. Big bite into that domain. Okay? And the father just turned around and said, why do you need to rely on dogs when you can have all the technology supporting the uh, the security in the neighborhood? You know, so like I said, I mean, it's a bit of a mix, you know, where physical yeah, you need to be true. visible, but the technology will have a long, long way ahead. That, that's how I see it. Mm -hmm. I don't know whether that answers the question. I think you know? so. I think so. I, I mean, <laughs> that that is the future. I mean, I think, I think yeah. we're moving towards that te technology and. And Tansri, yeah. uh, thank you, of course, for, for joining us today. We, we if, if my, I may say one yeah. thing. Number sure. one, the most important thing is the policies made by the government. It's very okay. important. <laughs> okay. So they have yeah. to, be, to, to have proper policies okay. in order to see that this works out. You know? Okay. If the policies is not uh, right, then it will be difficult. It will be difficult. <laughs> Susala, as they say. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So on, on that note, Tansri, I wanted yeah. to thank you for, thank you. for your time. I want to thank Bruce uh, for joining us and Iqbal uh, you, joining us for this virtual engagement of the Malaysia Global Business Forum, uh, the changing business dynamic of physical security. Uh, also, I'd like to thank, of course, our, our, our premier sponsor, uh, Empowered Data, for, for uh, sponsoring us today, uh, together with Bari Bujaya and AxSafe, uh, with, of course, the support of the Crisis Management Center. Uh, of course, the Malaysia Global Business Forum will continue to, to bring uh, as, as much as we can virtually uh, before we can meet again. And I'm sure, hopefully, Tansri, when we sure. can have sure. big uh, physical events, you'll yes. be one of our, our, our guests again. And thank you. Uh, thank you very much for joining us. And thank you, everyone, for, for joining us uh, virtually uh, in Malaysia and, of course, around the world. And we look forward to seeing you again on the next virtual engagement of the Malaysia Global Business Forum. Thank you. <coughs>